With Elizabeth Garrett being inaugurated in September 2015 as Cornell's 13th president, it's an appropriate time to think about the legacies of the last 12 presidents. And what better place to start than the Andrew Dixon White House right behind me here. This was built in the 1870s as the home for Cornell's very first president. Presidents at Cornell have left all different legacies over the years. Sometimes it's a building, sometimes it's a program, sometimes it's a garden like this one. We're here behind the Andrew Dixon White House, and these gardens were designed by Daisy Ferrand, who was the wife of Cornell's fourth president, Livingston Ferrand, who served from 1921 to 1937. Ferrand was responsible for a number of things. Uh, one interesting fact is that he was actually the only other president besides David Scorton who had a medical degree and Ferrand was chairman of the American Red Cross. Uh, as president, he guided Cornell through the Great Depression and also saw the creation of the College of Home Economics and unified the engineering college from separate units. We're in Malott Hall, and this is Dean Waldo Malott behind me, who was Cornell's sixth president, serving from 1951 to 1963. He was really the businessman president, the first Cornell president with an MBA. And this building was built for the MBA program, which is why it was named in Malott's honor. Malott oversaw one of the biggest construction booms in Cornell history, including campuses for the College of Engineering, uh, the School of Industrial and Labor Relations, and the College of Veterinary Medicine. I'm in front of Day Hall, Cornell's main administration building, named after Cornell's fifth president, Edmund Ezra Day. Yes, he's the only president with Ezra in his name. Day served as president from 1937 to 1949, guiding Cornell through World War II and overseeing the creation of the ILR school, the graduate business program, and the creation of the nuclear studies program. Cornell's second president was Charles Kendall Adams, who served from 1885 to 1892. He was President White's successor in many ways, having taken classes from White at the University of Michigan, joining the faculty after White left the University of Michigan, and then coming here to take over the presidency from Andrew Dixon White. Uh, during his tenure as president, the uh, College of Law was created, and Uris Library, the building right here, was built under Adams' tenure. He actually went on to be president of the University of Wisconsin after his career at Cornell. We talked about Andrew Dixon White in the previous video. As Cornell's co-founder and first president, he had an enormous impact on the founding ideals of the university and creating what we know of today, as well as giving his own personal library to create the university library. Jacob Gould Sherman was Cornell's third president and longest serving president from 1892 to 1920, 28 years. It was Sherman who created Cornell's unique relationship with New York State and oversaw the creation of the College of Veterinary Medicine and College of Agriculture. Dale Corson served as president from 1969 to 1977. He was the first scientist president. He actually co-discovered an element on the periodic table, astatine. Corson's presidency brought stability back to the university after the tumultuous 60s, and the Johnson Museum was built during his presidency as well in 1973. Frank Rhodes was president from 1977 to 1995. One of the most beloved presidents in the Cornell community, Rhodes focused on undergraduate teaching as a priority and also increased research funding significantly during his presidency. Hunter Rawlings was president from 1995 to 2003, and one of his real legacies was creating the North Campus and West Campus residential communities and bringing all new students to live together in one place. He also wanted to increase the living learning environment for students, bringing academic programs into the residential communities. David Scorton served as president from 2006 to 2015. His legacy includes an emphasis on a caring community and mental health initiatives on campus, including the expansion of Gannett Health Services, a focus on, on financial aid and continuing Cornell's commitment to educating any person, as well as the creation of the Cornell Tech program in New York City. Jeff Lehman was Cornell's president from 2003 to 2005. He continued to grow Cornell's international presence and he remains the only alumnus to serve as Cornell's president. James Perkins served as president from 1963 to 1969, a time period that included Cornell's centennial as well as a lot of student unrest. Perhaps his greatest legacy is diversifying the student body through the formation of programs like COSEP. A prize is given in Perkins' name each year to honor a campus organization committed to interracial understanding and harmony. 
As we stand in the sesquicentennial grove and reflect on the last 150 years of Cornell's presidents, we also look to the future and think about the legacy that Beth Garrett will leave as the first president of the next 150 years.